Hey everyone, welcome and thank you for joining us on this tutorial on Gizmos, the interactive math and science simulations for your classroom. Now if you haven't already checked out the promo video on Gizmos, there's a link in the description down below. You'll want to look at that and make sure that Gizmos is something you really want to get into, but it's a really, really powerful tool and like I said, I'm really excited about sharing this with you today and getting it in your hands so that you can use it with your students in Newport Mesa. To get started, you want to email Diana Thompson. You need to email Diana because you're given a unique enrollment code and she's holding on to these so that we're not just publishing them and they get in the wrong hands. Once they're used, they're used and so we want to make sure they're going only to our teachers here in Newport Mesa. All you need to do is let Diana know that you want to get started and tell her which site you're at because again, each site has its own code and number of licenses so we want to make sure we're getting you the right one. And then once you get the link, you can get yourself all signed up, and I'm going to show you exactly how you go and do that. Now, from the link that Diana would give you, you're going to come to a page like this, and it should already have your district and your school. So I've obviously clicked on the East Bluff link because that's the school that I teach at. And so from here, I would go through and input some of my information. Um, going through, I would enter my email, create a an username and a password, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and put in all the information necessary, click on next. Now, assuming that we've gone through that and you've managed to make all of that happen, you're going to come into a home page. Now your home page won't start out looking like this because I already have classes, you won't have any. But you want to start by adding a class. I'm going to add one for one of the classes that I teach. I just code them a little bit differently because as a science specialist, I have a number of classes that I see and in fact, I have 10 classes that I see. Uh, you can see all of these tabs open up here. I have 10 classes that I see and would use gizmos with them. You will have a standard set of six classes or an option for six classes with up to 35 students in each. That number is a little bit flexible so that you can go through and change up what you need if you're, you, your, your needs are a little unique or different. Um, you can add different things simply by calling gizmos and, and asking for a little bit more support and help. But this is the basic setup and getting situated that you'll need. Now from here, this class enrollment code is going to be really important for the next step. You're going to want to either display or distribute this enrollment code for your students so that you can enroll them in the class in the next step. You could, if you wanted, go through and manually enroll each student by yourself, but it's a real tedious process and I highly recommend using the enrollment process similar to what Google Classroom uses where you display the code, have the students go to the Gizmos website, enter the code and enroll themselves. And we'll go over that in the next segment of the video. Now that you've got your own teacher account and classroom set up, you're going to want to start getting your students enrolled and set up to start using the gizmos. So here's a quick list of what we're going to be covering and going over in terms of getting the students ready to go and using the gizmos. I'm going to click off of this and show you what it will look like for them. So you'll start with going to explorelearning.com, have the students all go and you want to distribute that class code that we talked about earlier. The easiest way to do this is to include a link with the class code into Google Classroom if you use it and just push that out to the students. So let's go over what it would look like for the students. Now when they get to the Gizmo site, it will look here and where they want to go is log in and enroll here in the upper right hand corner. From here we're going to want to enter the class code and I've already entered it into this for me. So they would just punch in this class code or if you use Google Classroom, the kids can copy and paste and hit enroll in class. Now from here, this tells a little bit about the class. This particular one is one of the fifth grade classes that I teach and you, the kids will have then have to decide do they already have an account or do they need to create an account. I would imagine that most of our students need to create accounts, so we'll hit register on the screen section and come down here. Have the students enter all of their pertinent information. I always have the students 
skip the email address. It's not required for students, and so I just don't have them bring it in. At this point, I always have the students try their six-digit username that they use for every computer. Now, in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six, probably taken by somebody somewhere. So by simply adding at nmusd.us, it takes away that restricted username issue, and they'll all push through. When I did this with my students, a lot of them uh, were able to get through with just the six digits. And then from here, have the students type in their password that is just their regular password when logging in on any Chromebook. And off we go, submit, and students are ready to enroll in a class. Okay, so now we've got our teacher account set up, we've got our class established, we've enrolled students, and we're ready to start finding and adding gizmos for the students to use. Now there are four ways to search for gizmos. We can search by the standard, we can search by aligned textbooks, we can search by grade and topic, and we can also search by keyword. Now by standard, you do need to know the standard you're working with. I'm really, really familiar with the science standards because I use them so much. So right now my third graders are working out of magnetism, which is out of the third grade science under physical science, and it's 2-3. So if I come here under science in third grade, I go down to PS 2-3, and I can see that there are two options here for me to add gizmos that are related to the standard that we're working with now. So I could click here on magnetism, add to the class, and if we went back to that specific class, you would see there it is, it's added and it's waiting for us. We can do the keyword search as well simply by clicking find gizmos and searching, typing in magnet, and it gives us all of the different gizmos that are available to us that relate to magnets. If that doesn't work for you or if that doesn't bring up what you're looking for, we can also search by grade and topic. So again, searching through grade and topic gives us grade bands of three through five that we would be looking at in either math or science. Let's say you were working out of no number and operations in mathematics, you could bring it here and say, oh, we were working in decimals and it would bring up everything that you had as an option for decimals. Finally, we can search by textbook. Now the textbook option relies on our district utilizing one of the publishers that has already aligned itself with Gizmos. And I don't think we have that at this time, so this version of search might not be as easy to use. But adding the gizmos is really easy. Once you find a gizmo that you're looking for, all you have to do, as I did before, was click on Add to Class, select the class you're working with. In my case, if for you, it might only be just one class, so you just add, and it would add, and those gizmos would end up showing up in the class here. And once we are here, we have the option to drag and reorder so that they come up as a different arrangement. We can hide them from the students so that we can see them, but the students aren't able to. We can delete them all together, and it gives us a lot of flexibility. And of course, if you have any questions about finding gizmos or how to manage your class, there are helpful articles here that will help you along the way. Okay, so I think one of the last important things to go over is how to review the gizmos and see what you're looking at on the information pages to make sure that you're accessing everything you need to access and you're setting up your gizmo experience to be as productive and as beneficial for the students as possible. Here I've got a class that's already got some gizmos set up in it, and so let's go straight here to this one on mouse genetics. Now, when you come in here to Mouse Genetics, there's a little bit of an overview of what the gizmo is all about and a little bit about what you'd be doing. You have the option to add it to the class. You have the option to launch the gizmo. This is something I highly recommend you doing every time just to see how the gizmo operates 
for yourself and get an idea of whether or not it's actually going to do what it is that you want to do. Now below all of this information are the lesson materials. You have student exploration sheets, you have answer keys, teacher guides, and vocabulary sheets. So if we click on the teacher guide here, what pops up is a PDF of the different learning objectives, uh, it shows suggested learning sequences, that gives you pre and post gizmo activities that you can be doing. Um, there's also some discussion questions down here, and at the very bottom is always some background information on the topic that you're trying to learn. At the very minimum, I suggest you go through each one of these before you share the gizmo with the students. That way, you're at least familiar with what it is that the students are going to be doing. This one happens to have three activities. That's pretty standard. It tells you here in activity A, B, and C what the students will be doing. And it gives you a lot of background and helpful information about how long each of these different activities should be taking and what you should be doing. Now, if we come back, there's also a student exploration sheet. This is what the students are actually going to be working on and filling out while they're doing this. So it looks a little bit like this, and they're all laid out about the same. They start out with a prior knowledge, which really doesn't require them to know anything, and then a gizmo warm-up section. This warm-up section teaches the students how to use the gizmo. So it goes really slow, and it's very, very directed. And from there, we get into activity A. Each activity is independent of one another. They tend to scale upward in difficulty as you go from A to B and from B to C. But each one is completely independent because as we see here, activity A, we start with these directions, follow what it is to do to set it up. Then as we move through the different tasks in activity A, we complete and fill it out. Then when we come to B, we can see here it starts with click clear and start out by setting up something new. And again, as we move through each of the different steps gives us an idea of what it is that we're supposed to be doing and is very directed in its design for how the students will move through the activity. And then same in, in activity C where we start all over with new instructions. When I've used this in the past, I've found that the hardest thing the kids experience is following the directions as they're written, because as you go through, it will give you specific directions to change or to add to the gizmo, to run different simulations, and all of the information is right there in front of them. They just need to read and follow those directions. Again, that's really the only difficult thing that kids have with this. Now, there is a PDF version, which is what I was showing you, but there's also an editable Word version that you can download as well. Same exact thing, only this gives you the option to edit any of the text, to completely remove things if you don't want them in there at all. You can simply highlight and delete and get rid of that stuff. I had a teacher one time ask me, could I just get rid of activity B? Do I need to have activity B in order to do C? And the answer is no. You don't have to have activity B in order to do activity C. They scale up in terms of difficulty, but you don't have to complete B in order to complete activity C. Because again, like I said from before, each one starts off with its own set of directions and starts from scratch. There's also an answer key here, and when you go to open up the answer key, it gives you a warning, please don't share the answer key that I'm about to share with you. So it's exactly what the students would see, except it has the answers written in for the students. And then the last thing is a customizable vocabulary sheet as well. So these are all of the different vocabulary terms that you would be utilizing within this particular gizmo. At the very bottom, there are is a from our community section. Oftentimes there are some really good helpful tips or collaborations from users who've used this in the past. They might have some suggestions or edits that make it a little bit more user friendly for your particular grade level. In terms of the grade levels too, it's really important that you understand this mouse genetics gizmo for instance is the same genetics gizmo that would be used in every grade level that talks about genetics or inheritance. So third grade has inheritance and genetics, so does sixth grade and so does high school. And so as you approach 
these different tasks. A might be really easy. B, of course, we get a little bit more difficult. And I found as you move into activity C, it tends to get, for at least us in the elementary level, it tends to get well beyond the bounds of what our students need to know in order to show mastery of the elementary science or mathematics standards. So I hope you found this tutorial on getting yourself up and running and started with gizmos to be helpful and beneficial. The very last thing I want to leave you with comes on your home page. So from anywhere on gizmos, if you select where your name is, you can go to your home page. It brings you here and you have this option for on demand PD. And if you select that, it loads and opens up a, series of tutorial videos similar to what you've just watched but that gives you a little bit more information on different techniques and different systems within gizmos for you to expand your ability to use the simulations to help your students. So I really like to encourage you to use these simulations for math and for science in your own classroom. They're really, really helpful for helping students make sense of difficult concepts and seeing visual representations of things that are a little bit abstract or hard to visualize. One piece of feedback I heard from a classroom teacher was how beneficial the use of these simulations was for their students in preparation for the end of the year test in terms of manipulating different simulations and getting used to reading directions, following directions explicitly and exactly as they are written to achieve a goal or to show some sort of understanding of the concepts and content that the students are working with. If you need more help with this, elementary science specialists are here to help. A great place to start is your personal science specialist at your site. They're a wealth of information and they can help out in a number of different situations. Diana Thompson is always a wonderful resource. She's our elementary science TOSA here in Newport Mesa. Tammy Evans and myself are available to come out and support in classrooms on Mondays, Wednesdays, or Fridays if you need extra help or support. Please don't hesitate to contact us. Again, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoy using gizmos in your classroom even more.